Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Uh, welcome to our webinar that uh, we'll talk about Flowmon's new versions uh, of operating system Flowmon ADS and Flowmon's DDoS Defender. Um, and today with me, uh, we have our product owners, uh, Lubosh, who's responsible for NPM parts, so Flowmon OS, and he will also be presenting Flowmon ADS today. And Martin, who's responsible for DDoS. Welcome, guys. Thank you very much. And my name is Arthur, and I'll be your host today. Um, please do send us your questions uh, throughout the whole call. Uh, we'll be answering them on the fly, and then perhaps we'll keep some for, for the end of the webinar. I'm expecting this one to take about 25 to 30 minutes, depending on, on, on your questions. Uh, and we will make sure to record the session so that you can uh, replay it uh, later, and we'll send you links. Uh, a few days after this session. All right, let's get rolling. Uh, who will we start with? Lubosh, is that you? If you prefer that. Uh, all right, <laughs> okay, cool. Okay, cool. So uh, let me let me share my screen. Uh, yeah, I will do a quick uh, intro. My name is Lubosh Monter. Uh, I I'm a product owner for NPMB uh, NPMB products uh, in Flowmo Networks, and I've prepared the summary and overview of uh, uh, of the latest release, uh, Flowmon 10.3. Then I will show you some features uh, from Flowmon 11, which is the next version. So you have image, you know, what is the direction of Flowmon, and then I will uh, I will show you some new stuff from the very new ADS the security module Flowmon. That's great, and you'll be switching between live demo and slides as well. Right, I, I just uh, I have just a few slides with agenda summary and that kind of stuff, and then I prefer to show you everything uh, within the live demo. All right, that's great. And looking at our screen, we're using wide lens here, so don't move too close to the camera. <laughs> I figure you could take more than half of the picture. <laughs> okay, I'm not fat, it's just wide screen. <laughs> Okay, cool. So uh, let's jump into Flowmon 10.3. Uh, what's new there? Uh, the top news uh, from my perspective is uh, configuration template, uh, which is something allowing users to go uh, to go online with Flowmon very fast to to have uh, their data and configuration uh, in few clicks and I will show you how easy it is to configure uh, all the stuff uh, like profiles and channels and uh, chapters and all the stuff you don't like to, to set up but it, it's just uh, you know it's just done on the background by a few clicks so, so effectively you're deploying in Flowmon it's completely blank there's nothing configured and then you go ahead and choose from libraries some pre-configured um, or predefined configurations. Yeah, exactly. And then take it from there. All right. Yeah, exactly. And you, you can really choose what you what you are about to monitor. So it's uh, really like uh, you know like wizard or mm -hmm. just step by step. Uh, it, it leads you how to do that. Uh, another area from the improvements is uh, the user experience. Uh, so I will show you the new flow Montage board. How it works, and also then I will follow uh, with the Flow 11, like another uh, improvements of dashboard, so you can see, you know, the direction of those uh, UX UX uh, improvements. Uh, some smaller adjustments, or how how to say that it's uh, you know the uh, user role management via RESTful API, which was required by some of our customers. Uh, then showing the hardware rate status uh, uh, in the uh, in the configuration center, so you can check if everything works well or not. Uh, then we have added uh, the TLS 1.3 uh, standard uh, support. So if you monitor the TLS communication, uh, it means you know the the handshake information, storing the handshake information within the uh, flow data, so you can use. Uh, uh, this feature, even if uh, if you run a 1.3 protocol, you are not losing uh, visibility into the into the information uh, from the TLS protocol. So even if you do not do the decryption, you can still do the monitoring of the encrypted traffic. So you can do the compliance of uh, 
uh, using usage of the uh, side pursuits and strand of the product of data uh, side pursuits. So this is uh, why it was important to support this uh, TLS Markov 3 protocol and then the, the uh, another group of uh, improvements is uh, like uh, performance uh, adjustment, security optimizations, new kernel, new PHP. So, so this is uh, like the agenda. Uh, right, so let's jump into the demo. Yeah. Let's do that. We already have some questions. Maybe we'll start with the new one. There's a question whether we're talking about version 10.3 or is it 10.03? Uh, it's uh, yeah, the, the 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 last dot o one two is just minor version. Uh, I will be, but uh, what I'm showing here is the version uh, three point ten three two. So that means it's just everything we have uh, in the branch of ten dot three. Right. So, so this is, but uh, I would say that those uh, minor versions uh, like dot. Zero two in this case is just uh, bug fixes. Then there are uh, very rarely new features in those uh, no, bug fixing versions. Now, so the point here is uh, the news in uh, ten point three. Uh, so yeah, let's start uh, with the dashboard. Uh, this is the very new dashboard using new technology. It's uh, it allows us to be more flexible when creating your own dashboard. You can just uh, you know move uh, with the widgets. They are adaptable. Uh, you can uh, yeah. Let me show you here. You can even uh, switch between default layout which means maybe you may know this from gmail or uh, you know and other systems which uh, adapt your uh, user interface they, they do uh, more spaces if you are in the default then you can go for the more comfortable uh, displaying like you, you can see more widgets in one place and even the compact view where it's just uh, you know, really, uh, uh, really, uh, how to say that it's stretched uh, in, in the uh, in the layout. So I prefer to use here the comfortable uh, layout. Uh, here, the you can move with tabs. You can uh, have on the dashboard. So this is um, uh, you know like the new new system of uh, workflow on the dashboard. But uh, what is really uh, what is really cool is uh, the configuration templates, and I will go and show you how that works. So let's switch into configuration center where they are managed, and here we have a new chapter configuration templates, and there is an offering of. Uh, uh, of your uh, uh, of your configuration templates, which are available, they are spread via Flowmode services, so we can easily update uh, configuration templates. Then, if you are about to monitor, for example, DNS protocol, you can just click here that you would like to import this, uh, or to you would like to apply this uh, configuration template, or you can show what that really means to monitor DNS. So you can see the content of the template. It will create for you profiles, report chapters. You can go through them. You can see how, how it looks like after the, uh, after the uh, applying of the configuration template. So everything is done automatically for you. And let's just see some technical data uh, in the bottom. You can see how the, the channels are specified. You can always do uh, like tuning if uh, if you would like to uh, to adjust something. You can do that. And let's let's see how it works. So we can apply the template, and uh, we can uh, find users for which we would like to apply this template. We can do some uh, configuration in the next steps. And 
Yeah, so you can choose whether you would like to have also the dashboard created uh, or reports and the stuff. So uh, for now, let's create everything. And the configuration is being done on the background. That means that you do not need to do anything manually here. You just need to wait until the profiles, chapters, uh, uh, course channels and profiles are uh, created and uh, you can see the status bar and uh, the status bar here. It will take about one minute to, uh, to get, it, uh, get it ready. So maybe meantime, I will show you uh, something from uh, Flowmon 11, which is, the, which is the next version. We are uh, right now, it is under development and uh, we, will, we are following up on the uh, UX improvements and we have created new types of uh, widgets that means you can uh, have status widget you can see easily uh, how how are uh, or uh, what is the status of your, of your closed sources what is the overall status of your applications in case you you use uh, flowmon api what is the security status if you uh, if you are using the flowmon ads so everything is uh, in uh, one place. But what is more important for me is that this is super easy to create these dashboards again. So once you create the new tab on the dashboard, you can choose from predefined dashboard. Then you just choose whether it, uh, you would like to, to create predefined dashboard from uh, NetOps perspective, SecOps perspective, application perspective, or the status one. So let's do the uh, let's do the NetOps. You can do you can change the name, create, and everything is create is being created for you in the background, and uh, the dashboard is ready to use after that. Previously, in the previous versions. Uh, once you clicked on the create widgets, it, it was like randomly chosen uh, widgets uh, from your chapters. Right now, you, you have full control of what you would like to, to see on the dashboard. I'm not sure if you have uh, Pullman APM installed on this instance, but I saw really, really cool widgets there. They can give you an like, overall idea about the performance of your application straight away from the dashboard without any need of like running down or seeing anything. So, so uh, apart from those top level widgets, we're also introducing some more functional widgets that you haven't seen before, right? Which is exactly the case of the one in the upper left corner, actually. Yeah, right. That's right. This is something uh, completely new in Flowmon 11. Uh, the widgets are uh, more detailed. They pro provide you more information, more in-depth information in case you are about to, to uh, monitor the depth. Mm -hmm. but, uh, I see also the value of the overall status because you know so sometimes our customers do have different kind of users, right? If uh, if the user's responsibility is to keep an eye on the overall status of the network, they often are not interested in the detail. So for them, they can create for them very general dashboards. And they, they do not need necessarily to see all the details. If they do need to see the details, they can create the deeper uh, the widgets uh, with uh, with the deeper detail. Right? So this is uh, this is something completely new in Flow 11. And uh, yeah, let me show you the new reporting, which is another stuff in Flow 11 uh, with another improvements uh, in uh, reports and. What is really uh, uh, new is the uh, the scheduling of the reports, more detailed scheduling. So let me let me create some uh, some new report. Uh, yeah, you can choose chapters. You can again uh, filter out the uh, the chapters for, uh, related to some uh, use case or module. So let's uh, do some. Security stuff. You can add the report. Again, you can uh, use uh, this, uh, this intuitive uh, you know, ordering. And once doing the schedule, you can just uh, you know, use this uh, advanced uh, uh, scheduling options. So it's uh, super, super easy to create uh, these kind of reports that you can I'll pick the format and just uh, schedule uh, the report here. 
So uh, this is what we already have in Globemon 11. We are uh, another big change will be uh, user rights improvements and uh, uh, are going deeper in the multi-tenancy. It means that uh, we will be able uh, to provide native, a native multi-tenancy. Uh, so that means the data uh, will be not driven only by the user role management, but uh, it, it's uh, the more advanced uh, system of uh, splitting the data so we can ensure that uh, the uh, customer, for example, some MSP can create separate instances for their end customers and uh, the system ensures that everyone sees only the data uh, from his sources, from his channels, chapters, and that there is no need to to go uh, uh, to uh, there is no need to uh, to do the uh, user role management in that in, in such uh, how to say it in not straightforward way as yes. uh, we have our recent multi tenancy is kind of. Uh, uh, Workaround in the sense that it's not native, right? The, the data is only and driven by the, by the uh, use role management. After Flowmon 11 is out, it will be easy to create and to split your uh, to split your device into a separate and uh, independent virtual devices. So this will be really uh, really easy to maintain. Any questions so far on that? But we do have some questions. One question is okay. whether, um, and that actually goes back to the, the library of uh, pre-configured dashboards. Mm -hmm. And uh, the question goes, hello, does it mean that with configuration templates, I'm able to add specific attributes for IB fix, uh, uh, just to extend the current rather small number of supported vendors? Uh, if no, when are you going to ask the functionality of creating own templates for IB fix, just to add to a database all required fields which are shared by different manufacturers. Uh, yeah, right now in the configuration template, so you can choose from the list of uh, predefined. And this question is not easy to answer because then the, there are two answers on that. If we map, if we have some third party vendor adding uh, some IPFIX extension into their own IPFIX implementation, in some cases, we do mapping on our own uh, IPFIX fields. In that case, you can use it easily with the recent uh, configuration templates, and then there is no need to do anything. If, if the uh, IPFIX extension of the third-party vendor is not mapped on ours, Right now, it is not covered on the, uh, in the configuration templates, but the future of configuration templates is like really open. It should be uh, like uh, the user's tool. So it will be easy to create own user's uh, configuration templates. And uh, this is something you can share with if you are a partner and you sell some third party vendor, which uh, and which has some uh, IPFIX extensions, you can create your own, you will be able to create your own uh, IPFIX uh, or your own templates using those uh, extensions. And uh, I see uh, a possibility or opportunity for us to create a community around those configuration templates because, you know, once some, some new user creates something uh, useful for him, it's very good to share it. What do you think, Arthur, about that? Absolutely. And I think that the next question that we have that says, it's cool, but it's always only the design and not the exposition for the team every day that they that, that, that change way to create profiles and share it with many user, users automatically based on parameters and things like this. Um, and I think that we're, we're actually starting with providing um, an easy to navigate list of free configured um views on the data and then the next uh step would be to how to share between users and how they can create their own and and and, and give it to their teammates or share it across the, the, the community so 
Um, yeah. Yeah. Another idea we are working already on is uh, to have uh, to have like a marketplace uh, of those configurations. So uh, you can imagine that like uh, you know library uh, which allows you to pick what is relevant for you, and this is something which uh, I, I personally do do, do want to uh, users not creating you know that. Uh, uh, profiles, chapters by their own. They even they, they should not necessarily know about it. What you know? Why why end user needs to to know about uh, profile and chapter? So I agree. In storage, you want yeah. you want yeah. that, and then so 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 this is yeah. this is uh, definitely aligned with our vision, and uh, we are working on that. Uh, definitely, this is something which uh, users uh, will appreciate. I, I I'm sure about that. And uh, yes, the, the question confirms that. All right, and last question, and, and actually we need to speed up a bit. But the last question for this is whether we would include encrypted traffic analysis um, uh, configure, pre-configuration uh, for, for, uh, for that. Uh, yeah, I think, well, let, let me check if the, if, uh, the TLS is, yeah, the, the TLS is already between uh, or among those uh, application protocols. Uh, of course, we need to realize here that in case of monitoring uh, TLS, you have to you, know, you have to collect IPFIX uh, Pro or uh, from some vendor uh, for which we do have already the support. I know that uh, we, we support the TLS from Gigamon already. Uh, maybe there are others. But uh, this is something uh, you already can cover by configuration templates. And maybe I can show you details, but once you apply this uh, configuration template, what is being created for you? Um, so, yeah, yeah, let's, uh, let's get maybe moving. Okay, so we can cover other parts as well. Okay, so. The maybe I I can switch uh, to the ADS part. To just, be, uh, that will be great. Unless we have something important to cover in the uh, phone, I, I don't think so. We've we've covered uh, the new dashboard and the reporting. We've covered configuration templates. We've covered the role management, and those I believe are the most important parts. Yes. And for the rest, please refer to our release notes available on phone and blog. Um, and let's get moving to the ADS then. Okay, so I will show you again some uh, summary what what's new in AES. So again, we are moving uh, or we are improving the uh, user experience here. So there's completely redesigned interface. There is new filter management feature, which is uh, really useful. And I will show you again uh, how cool it is. Uh, then uh, user uh, has option to uh, to use uh, his own reputation feeds, uh, either uh, some uh, some web service or uh, some CSV file. Uh, there are new uh, external services available to use. Uh, the syslog uh, syslog export uh, contains uh, the data feeds and perspectives, which was uh, again some. Uh, Customers' requirement and very useful for customers uh, collecting the data in CM system. And there is an integrated IDS collector. So I will show you again the, uh, the online demonstration of the new interface. So this is the dashboard of uh, ADS 10.0. Uh, here, again, the concept of uh, perspectives is. Uh, uh, is uh, he remains, uh, but you can identify that the dashboard looks completely different. And let me show you the workflows. You can see uh, you can do filtering uh, in the top, and then you can use uh, two views on the on the uh, data uh, dashboard. The first is per priorities or per methods. So let's say you would like to go per priorities and you would like to investigate just you know the critical uh, three critical events. So you can, you can just choose some time interval. You can see which events uh, were in the time interval. What is really new here is 
the comparison of the previous uh, previous interval. So then you can see how it looked like uh, the uh, for the last four hours and the previous last four hours. So you can always compare the situation for the uh, interval before uh, the displayed interval, which is uh, re really useful. You can then identify whether this is some regular event or how it should look uh, like in the network. Then the, the, the new aspect here is showing the trend. If, uh, uh, if it is going wrong or, uh, or vice versa. And then when drilling down to the events detail, you can see like uh, the chart showing in time the, uh, the event and the details there. Yeah, maybe I will choose some wider interval. Okay. Another detail. Another things, uh, thing I would like to show you here is showing the, the filter uh, where the IP address belongs to. So you can imagine that you create your own filters for, for example, critical infrastructure, printer servers, uh, some uh, public facing services, internal systems. And then during the investigation, you can always see easily where the source IP address belongs to. You can work with uh, those filters and you can uh, you know, immediately identify uh, how important is it for you, because I can imagine that it's different uh, once uh, you see or some, uh, I don't know, uh, some sandbox or uh, whether you uh, you are dealing with problem on some uh, critical service facing customers so and, you know, different risks involved in, in right. the paths so so this is some and uh, let me show you the uh, the filter management and maybe before you get there i think maybe just to wrap up i think that the biggest difference is really in the workflow in a way that instead of just switching back and forth in different views and different taps. You can really go cascade style to drill down to get more details about events and kind of make it just easier to put things and information together in a single view. Yeah, that, that's right. And uh, we discuss with our customers, you know, we discuss the workflow and this is something we learned from customers, you know, that once they're investigating the incident, they, what they do, the first thing is to check what is the device, what is the affected device, right? That's why we have add, added the external services. You can do ping on the one click. You can, uh, you can use another external services for, uh, during the investigation, I will show you here, right? You have some IP tools uh, by hand. You can do this uh, external, uh, you use external services. This reflects the real workflow, how uh, users you know, investigate incidents. And also the filters are uh, super handy for them because they, they already have their network split into different uh, you know, filters so they can easily, uh, easily work with uh, those data. So why not to show them uh, you know, how in which part of the network it belongs to, right? So, yeah, let me show you here the filters. So, for example, here we do have a filter for critical infrastructure. It's, uh, you know, you can use uh, ranges when creating, but you can also use the operations. So, here I prepared filter, uh, which already, which uses the previous one I showed you, the uh, critical infrastructure. But uh, you subtract uh, IP addresses which are included in another filter. So you have some advanced operations when using filters. So this is uh, this is really useful uh, useful for uh, for this workflow. And uh, the last thing I would like to stress out here is the false positive when there is one small but super handy 
feature that you can just deactivate the, uh, the false positive. That means if you are doing uh, some investigation or you do not want to lose the data and uh, the false positive rule, you just deactivate that temporarily and then you can uh, go back and uh, activate it again or reactivate it again. So this is something uh, which is again you know useful and it comes from uh, from uh, from customers they uh, they requested that. Uh, so so the difference is activating activating and deactivating instead of deleting and then recreating it. Right. Making it. Yeah, exactly. right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, so this is um, this is the most important stuff uh, which is new. But uh, yeah, I, I believe that uh, you know we uh, should have uh, should have had the, the separate webinar just for the new uh, ADS. Uh, there is a lot of improvements. Uh, so we will be actually releasing uh, next major version that will come with stream processing, stream data processing, which means. Uh, reducing time to detection in, with some you know, multiplying factor. Uh, and we'll definitely talk about that again. So I'm expecting at the beginning of the next year, we'll, we'll have another session specifically for ADS because there's a lot of new stuff in there. And, 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 and as, you, as you said, it requires a bit more after that. Yeah, so if there are no questions uh, related to ADS, I will pass uh, the presenter to Martin. Or we actually have one last question because the rest was actually, actually answered by you um, as you were presenting. Uh, any idea when version 11 will be available for us for the upgrade? Uh, and new ADS version also. So I think those are two questions. Uh, Flow 11 and ADS 11. Yes, Flow 11, uh, I expect uh, spring 2020 to be in beta, in beta available. And uh, for Flowmon ADS, uh, it's, I think it's Q1, but I, I, I'm not the, the product owner of ADS, so I, you know, yeah. don't, we don't play had to ask, <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> had to ask you to cover for our colleague and, and, and yeah. take over. Um, ADS version 10 that you see right now is really, is being released as beta, right? And we're expecting, uh, this to become stable in spring uh, next year, which is also uh, the, this period when we'll be releasing another version, version 11, that will have the same feature set, only uh, capable of stream data processing, which means reducing time to, to detect. Uh, and with uh, better detail, we can come back to you offline. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, and moving on to your phone, the data defender. So, what did it? Yeah. Uh, stage is yours. Okay, so let me just share my screen. Something is happening. Okay. Okay, oops. Okay, so let me just briefly introduce myself. I'm Martin Chikura and I'm product owner. Uh, of uh, DDoS Defender, our module for uh, DDoS, volumetric DDoS attack detection and mitigation orchestration. So today I will be presenting you with the news in the version 5 and I'm uh, really excited to do that because this is the version which uh, has been cooking for some time and brings several new features, big features. Uh, here is a list, uh, so I will just summarize before I show you show you more details. So first of all, uh, we uh, are now working in a stream architecture, so uh, the detection engine is now working uh, on the streams uh, and it provides us with the high performance and quicker detection speeds. Uh, another major area was to improve the user experience and modernize the UI. And uh, another uh, thing we focused on is to uh, really extend the detection capabilities of the module and provide um, much higher customizability for the user so they can better tune the detections. So let's start with stream processing. Uh, as I said, uh, we are now processing the flows continuously instead of batches. So this uh, allows us to detect the attacks uh, much quicker. <clears throat> in 
internally we are working on one second level. However, the shortest, uh, let's say, detection speed is uh, 10 seconds. It's configurable by user. And it really makes sense to have uh, it larger than one second because otherwise you would uh, see a lot of uh, false positives or you might see. And sorry to jump in, but yeah. this concept is exactly what is going to happen with Bloomon ADS yes, the exactly. next year in Virgin yeah. 11, right? Basically, our modules uh, are uh, going to from batch uh, processing to stream processing, and the D2 Defender is the first uh, which introduced that. Great. And another benefit is a high performance. So we are now talking about 1,000 protected segments per appliance, uh, but this is actually uh, depending on the platform and hard, uh, hardware resources uh, provided to the virtual machine or uh, provided in the uh, hardware appliance of the FOMO collector. Next big thing. Uh, we have modernized the UI, uh, let's say the UI, so it now looks uh, uh, consistently, it's, it's uh, the same look you are used from the configuration center, um, monitoring uh, center, and now also the ADS. Uh, but we didn't stop with the new looks, we also improved, uh, improved how the uh, attack list looks like, uh, what are the workflows, and uh, we actually rearranged the attack list so it will provide you better insights and streamlined workflows of the user. So let's focus on the uh, detail of the attack. Uh, as you can see, there are some uh, information about the status with the, with the countdown of the time mode, which is configured by user. Some uh, simple, simple line which uh, shows you the trend of the network traffic during the attack. So you can see if uh, the traffic volumes are increasing, decreasing, or stagnating. You can also see the target of the attack together with uh, the attack vectors. So if it is general flood, UDP flood, or a uh, different kind of attack. Uh, the action status was changed comparing to the previous versions, as we are now showing just a few last statuses do not overwhelm the user with uh, his information. And uh, there is an action button, uh, which is different for, for uh, uh, attack groups uh, by state. So I will show you on the screen. Uh, here you can see that uh, there are attacks grouped by the state. So we have uh, active attacks. Uh, active attacks with active mitigation and the ended attacks, and each has a different uh, action button. So it allows you to just on one click do uh, what you need to do uh, with the attack, uh, respecting the, the, its, its status. <clears throat> okay, let's move on. Uh, we also improved the attack detail, so now um, there are different kinds of data we are visualizing. Uh, previous top and statistics are not uh, uh, present, they are replaced with uh, uh, statistics which are showing the traffic volumes uh, before the attack, during the attack, and after the attack. And we also are showing the communication, uh, communication chart which shows the traffic flows from attack attacker to victim together with uh, some more use information like it's per seconds with per seconds. Uh, thank you very much for all the questions. We're busy with the board trying to answer them all. Uh, I also have some for the details, so let me know Martin when you're ready uh, to take yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, in, in a minute. <laughs> right. I'll just finish this I think, details uh, and uh, we can get to the question. Wonderful. So this is how it looks like. It's actually now a full screen uh, full screen window with the summary of the attack information together with the traffic and baseline visualization. Uh, what some of the news is that you can visualize the, uh, the traffic in the packets or uh, bits per second. So uh, it will help you also to better analyze the attack. And then there is a statistics tab with uh, the new statistics as I was uh, talking about. Uh, so there are uh, the charts for the 
traffic, uh, how the traffic looked before the attack, during the attack, after the attack. And these charts are interactive, so you can click on the different uh, uh, traffic types to visualize just the traffic type and uh, change the settings of the graph. So it will provide you a better understanding of the uh, traffic uh, uh, and the attack traffic structures. Okay, so before I talk about segments, we can go to some questions. I think one that comes um, uh, that will be uh, a nice to answer uh, to the whole audience. Regarding to the DDoS, I have heard that you have some integrations or scenarios with A10 device. If that's correct, can you explain how does it work with A10? How does DDoS remediation is being realized with A10? If this question is just my mistake, which isn't, thank you for the question, or misunderstanding, please ignore. Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, we have a uh, integration with uh, the A10 devices, and it works uh, uh, actually similar or the same way as we integrate with other vendors like Radware and F5. And it's basically out of band detection and uh, traffic redirection for mitigation. So we are collecting flows from uh, H routers. Detecting, uh, detecting the attack, and if we detect the attack, we are doing some steps to redirect the traffic to the A10 mitigation uh, boxes, grabbing centers, uh, where the attack is, uh, where the attack is uh, mitigated, and only the clean traffic is sent to the customer. And what I really like about this new is that you can you have all this information at the your fingers. So once the mitigation starts, you can actually see the status yeah, yeah. Uh, visible on the timeline of events directly at the at the at the main dashboard. Uh, and it just seems that uh, you have everything you need on a, in, in a single view. And I find it really um, pretty useful and interesting. Uh, and please correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, this also comes from the research we've done with our customers when we were looking at uh, how to minimize the number of clicks they need to do in order yeah. to, to do the job that they wanted to do. Yeah, yeah, you're correct. Wonderful, thank you. Okay. Um, another question would be uh, whether NetFlow is uh, enough for this DDoS detection. Yeah, yeah, NetFlow is uh, good for the detection. You can also go with SFlow, which is sampled flow. So uh, any supported flow format, uh, which is NetFlow, IPFix, SFlow, and many others, uh, can be used for the DDoS detection. Yeah, but let, let's be clear here. If we are talking about volumetric DDoS detection, that's right. If, uh, if somebody would like to cover like the whole scale or you know uh, layer two up to layer seven yeah. DDoS detection for that cases, is definitely uh, NetFlow not enough. Uh, but here we again complement uh, with uh, A10, for example, as it, as it was mentioned, as they are able to do their precise detection and mitigation on their with their inline device. But uh, we cover the volumetric uh, use case for them. In case of volumetric attack, we redirect the attack to them, and they are able to do another analytics. Uh, uh, over that traffic and they can detect another um, layer seven attacks within that but uh, yeah our use case is focused mostly on data centers or isps dealing with uh, dealing really with the volumetric volumetric stuff yeah that's correct yeah once we are for the volumetric part and once it is redirected we uh, our partners can cover the application layer uh, attacks but uh, until then, we are talking about volumetrics. Brilliant. We're nearly at the end. Uh, so let's go back to the slides. I think we have a couple of OK. So uh, what we also changed in the new version is uh, how we work with segments. So uh, it has now a separate configuration page. And uh, the segments can be grouped now. Uh, grouped now. So that helps us to uh, Define tenants with high granularity, so we can have one group for a customer, and uh, within that group we can uh, uh, have more protected segments, uh, uh, which describe uh, uh, describe uh, the ranges we want to protect. Uh, so it uh, doesn't have to be just one uh, protected segment, and 
there is also a change in multi-tenancy, so the user roles are now uh, accessing uh, uh, or the access permissions are now defined on the group level. So this is also something which will help our customers who are actually making services upon our uh, uh, DDoS Defender, who are basically selling the DDoS protection as a service to their customers. Another uh, big thing in the segments uh, is the baseline preview. So this was not previously available. Uh, and this allows the uh, user to uh, visualize the baselines and the traffic uh, for all supported traffic types and all, all baselines from all the detection methods within a, a defined time range. So even in a piece time, uh, the user can analyze uh, the baselines and they can use it, for example, to tune the system, tune the detections. As I mentioned, uh, uh, we extended uh, the attack detection capabilities of the Defender, uh, Jesus Defender. So uh, what that means, uh, we added another baseline, it's weekday baseline. So uh, it calculates the, the it, calculate, it is calculated for the same day of the week for up to four weeks back and uh, it complements the continuous baseline, uh, which is calculated for some defined uh, uh, period back in time. So you're essentially comparing... Mondays uh, to Mondays. Mondays to Mondays. Yeah, yeah. yeah basically. Um, we also uh, extended ad uh, adaptive baselines, which are our baselines. Uh, you don't need to basically configure. You just uh, allow them and the detection works. So. Uh, we extended uh, this uh, to calculate uh, attacks or the, to uh, detect attacks also uh, for bits per second. So if there is some increases in bits per seconds, uh, not in the packets per seconds, we can now detect this attack too. So all these new uh, new things uh, allows uh, allows us to uh, tune the detection and detect the attack with high precision. Uh, we also wanted to provide user with the options to create their own custom baseline, so the user can define uh, protocol and port pairs. It can be port, single port, or port range, and then they can use up to five of these custom baselines for each uh, rule, and uh, that means for each prote protected segment. So if you have a customer who wants to protect some services on applications which are running on specific ports, uh, you can use it by uh, defining custom baseline. What also changed, because, uh, because as we extended the detection capabilities, the detection rule definition is now extended with, uh, to cover all these uh, options. So now the detection rule is divided to sub-rules and the sub-rules is basically detection method, uh, traffic type, and some configuration of the detection method. So here on, the, on this picture, we have an example of adaptive, uh, adaptive uh, method, which is uh, 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 which uses the old traffic uh, to detect the attacks. And then there are some uh, other options to configure the, the sub-rule detection method. So as you can see here, uh, that adaptive attack method can uh, have various configurations. We can allow the continuous baseline or weekday baseline, and it can be configured to detect over the packets per seconds, bit per seconds, uh, both or none. And there are some multipliers uh, to, to tune the detection. So, this is uh, also something new, which allows the users to uh, basically configure the system the way they, they want and they need. Okay, so that's everything from my side. Are there any other questions, Dr. Brilliant. There were some, but again, you covered them uh, just okay. with the overview presentation. Uh, we, we've covered all of them, and we actually managed to cover some um, on your behalf during during the uh, during your presentation, thank you so much for all the questions. Uh, there were so many, and 
uh, we have some great feedback that I've sent to you uh, or check now so that you can uh, go back to it offline and, and, and maybe answer them as well. Um, so to wrap up, we've worked on performance with stream data processing we, that will also be available in, in Formula ADS soon. We've uh, worked on workflow so that everything is available from single view with some cascading um, uh, analytics that you don't have to uh, 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 mingle or between a few tabs or, or, or windows. We've redesigned the way you work with the dashboards and reports in a way that they are just so much more uh, easier to customize with predefined configuration templates that you can choose from so that you don't have to configure them yourself, but just really go for uh, something that uh, we've done uh, on your behalf and we'll be working on, on, on extending these capabilities in the future. Um, I believe this is, these are the most important ones. We have uh, three new questions just over the last half minute, so let's maybe see. Uh, thank you for, um, for, for the, the great feedback that you had. And uh, one last question is, is the baseline visible now? And I don't, I'm not sure what we're referring to. Uh, well, the baseline uh, in the traffic chart is visible now only, yeah. like now in the 4.x versions, uh, not in this many major. Uh, I'm referring to the older versions. It is visible uh, in attack detail, so only when there is some attack. But in the new version, you will see uh, or you are able to visualize these baselines also in the peacetime when there is no attack. So this is the major improvement. Awesome. Okay, thank you very much all for, uh, for spending uh, this time with us. We will make sure to provide a link to the recording of the session. I've also received feedback well for quality of the audio. Uh, I do apologize while we were testing, we didn't find any issues and we're using quite high-end equipment. So, um, uh, we'll make sure to work on that for the future. Have a great day and see you next time after Christmas. Enjoy uh, the festive season well and get some rest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Goodbye.